what's going on guys it's retro time retro flex welcome to the podcast uh gaming retros gaming news uh thank you guys for being here i don't know why it still says retro gaming news debut i did change that as well as the topic uh today's topic is going to be tower unite um i don't know why that 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 beginning part didn't uh change but let me actually see if that will change real quick uh, panel setting. Go and update channel again. Hopefully that fixed it. Hopefully that corrected the problem. It looks like it did. Did 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 did. Again, Glimish is kind of buggy. So I am sorry because it's brand new. Uh, <laughs> welcome in, Bryce. Uh, so today we actually have, how ironic, uh, we actually have, uh, Bryce as our guest with us today. Let's go ahead and bring him on to help us. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce is, uh, guys, be gentle and be kind with Bryce. He's a little camera shy. And it's, uh, this was kind of a last minute thing. So, uh, unfortunately, Shadow wasn't able to make it. So Bryce is going to be filling in, uh, unfortunately, um, but it's good to have Bryce here. I say unfortunately, but nothing bad towards <laughs> Bryce. So <laughs> how's your day going, Bryce? Jeez, it's going all right. It's going well. It's going well. Excited to talk about, uh, what are you talking about? Tower, Tower Unite today. So Bryce has actually been playing Tower Unite for a while, uh, just like I have. And, uh, there we go, clean that camera up a little bit. But Bryce has been playing Tower Unite for a little while, just like I have. And, uh, we're super excited to be talking about the topic. Uh, it should be a really good time today. We got a bunch of different things to go over. Um, but for those of you who, uh, have not yet seen Tower Unite, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the background music. And we are going to uh, hop over to um, we're going to hop over to our trailer scene, and we're going to watch a quick trailer over Tower Unite uh, as a group. That way, everyone knows what Tower Unite is. It'll give a little bit of an insight, show some of the games, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and watch that. I think the minute the video is only a minute forty, so it's not too bad. So let's let's go ahead and take a look at that, guys. So there's a little insight to uh, Tower Unite for those of you who don't know what Tower Unite is. Uh, there's that. Um, Tower Unite is like 
a uh, like a party game, if you would. It's really fun. It's a game you can play with a bunch of friends and just kind of hang out and have a good time. Um, it, and it's 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 not bad price. It's only twenty five dollars. The game is unfinished. It's still in beta mode. Um, and with it being in beta mode, it was uh, it's, it's a little buggy, but it's not terrible. Um, so what, how would you describe Tower Unite, Bryce? So, I guess if you really um, a way to put it in like a Nintendo terms, I guess is it's kind of like a cross between Wii Sports Resort and Mario Party, if that makes sense, <laughs> or like some sort of party game. But and you can kind of think of it as like almost like a Second Life, if you've ever heard of Second Life, the video game, or um, what's the other one? Like a grown-up version of Club Penguin, I guess, is another way to put it. So it's one of those things that's more connecting with people, you know, being becoming friends with people online, meeting new people. Um, and it's really great for people like people that are introverted like me because you can meet people and come into contact with people and, you know, without them actually seeing you. If you're, like, incredibly camera shy like I am, you're like, <laughs> don't like your voice um it's great because you don't have to you know have your camera on you it's kind of like a lot of people cosplay right and they cosplay because they're sometimes they're insecure about themselves or don't really um they're just insecure about themselves so they can basically this is a medium so they can socialize with people without actually having to you know display the things that they're a little bit self-conscious about which is kind of cool right and um i think bryce and i the only reason bryce and i are actually connected is because of tower unite uh bryce came in contact with one of my good friends on tower unite and uh then she introduced me to bryce and we played and now we play all sorts of games together uh we play seven days to die together we play escape first together there's a lot of good great games and you can make great friendships on tower unite um so the, the, the game selection for Tower Unite is pretty interesting as well. Uh, the game selection, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the game selection here. Um, we have Mini Golf, Zombie Massacre, Virus, Little Crusaders, Ball Race, and Accelerate. Uh, and that's just the game port. Like, that's just the game world port. Um, that's not including all the little extras and all the cool little activities you get to do outside of the game port. Uh, golf, uh, mini golf on Tower Unite is kind of like uh, golf with your friends on the Xbox. Uh, for those of you who know what that is. Um, I, I don't really have a game to compare Zombie Massacre to unless you do, <laughs> Bryce. No, um, it's almost like... Yeah, I don't really have anything to compare it to. <laughs> not really um basically i mean i guess i can explain how it works sort of um it's almost like a battle arena game where you're put in the city and you're trying to defend waves of zombies from you know attacking all of your group of people that are in in the game and and killing all you guys that's essentially what it is it's uh you got to protect yourself and then make it to the helicopter and then fly it's kind of hard to explain without actually having the game there um but yeah you basically need to get away from zombies you basically got to massacre the zombies <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's all different weapons too there's like a tommy gun and a flamethrower and a katana and uh chainsaw too. yeah there's a chainsaw there's there's all sorts of little goodies uh there for that and it's just, it's a really fun, quirky little game. Um, it's not necessarily the game I play, but I know a lot of people who actually enjoy Zombie Massacre, even though it's not my type of game. But you kind of got that third-person aerial view, too. Like a dungeon crawler, for example. So if you guys like dungeon crawlers, that might be the game for you. Uh, I personally don't 
care for dungeon crawlers. So the only dungeon crawler, I only two dungeon crawlers I've ever found that I've actually liked has been Fate, which is a really old dungeon crawler, and uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Those are the only two dungeon crawler games I really care for. Uh, I tried to play Diablo 3 and it just wasn't my game. Um, and I've tried a couple of other... Fate before. Huh? You played Fate 2? Yeah, I've played I Fate. I the only one to play Fate. No, I Fate, Fate, Fate was a great game. You had all the different levels in the dungeons and it yeah. was... It was a great game. Like it, it really was. It was a little quirky cartoon style game that was free if you bought like a Windows 7 PC or whatever the old school PCs were. Uh, it was it was a great game. Through Wild Tangent, I think it was. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. Um, and then you have Virus in the game port world, which is kind of like a uh, variant of Halo's Infected. Uh, or uh, what is the uh, Call of Duty one that people are more familiar with? Infection. Infection, there you go. So infected on Halo or infection with Call of Duty, and that's kind of like what Virus is. Uh, there's one person that's infected and it's random every time. There are no teams. You have infected and you have the survivors. That's it. And the goal is to infect everybody. Um... And there's multiple different different levels to different maps. There's a subway, an office. Uh, I don't really know what else there is because those are the only two I really play, <laughs> which sounds terrible. Um, and then there's a Little Crusaders game, which is uh, Little Crusaders is interesting. It's not really my favorite game on the list, but uh, it's definitely a game to play if you're new um, new to Tower Unite. It, it's like little knights little bitty knights about this big toy knights and they go against the stuffed dragon you have to press a button on his back before he eats everybody so it, it, in a way i guess it's kind of like virus but it's more 1v5 or whatever so apparently the game was based on an rpg known as mother 3 you talk about um, little crusaders yeah, it was known. It was originally based off of a game RPG called Mother Three, and then it became uh, Ultimate Chimera Hunt or Chimera Hunt in uh, the prequel to Tower Unite, and then it became um, Little Crusaders in this final version. Interesting. So, just something to compare it to, I guess. I guess that's what it was based off of. That's an interesting backstory. I didn't know that. So or Earthbound. Earthbound is another one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I yep. played Earthbound on the uh, Super Nintendo. So, really good game. Really good game. Um, Ball Race is another game inside the game port. Um, and Ball Race, for those of you, it's just like uh, uh, Super Monkey Ball. You go through an obstacle course and you have to finish the course. Uh, and you're in a giant hamster ball. It's a goofy, quirky game that's extremely difficult for no friggin' reason. Um, it's just, it's super intense. Like, it, it, there's no reason a game should be as difficult as it is. But it's definitely challenging. Uh, but it's still fun because, like, you can all kind of goof off and, you know, have a good time together. Um, and then you have Accelerate, which is the last game in the game port as of right now. And Accelerate is kind of like a knockoff version of, um, or repackaged version of Mario Kart. Um, you can get on there and you can go to the Steam Workshop and you can uh, upload your own custom cart. So it, it's kind of cool. Uh, and again, we didn't talk about this in the beginning and this is something we should have mentioned earlier. Tower Unite is a Steam Workshop game. You can only buy it through Steam, as far as I'm aware, it's Steam exclusive, and it's only for PC, um, which is kind of nice for those who are just strictly PC gamers. Uh, but it sucks for those who are console-based players, uh, which is a thing to consider. Um, should they make a console version? Should they not? I don't think they should. I think it's perfect the way it is. Uh... But anyways, back to the main discussion of the game. Uh, 
but that that's all the games for the game port world or the game world. Uh, what's what's really cool is outside of the game port, there is uh, there there are a lot of games that are outside of the game port. Uh, games such as laser tag, bowling, um, typing derby, and fishing. Uh, let's start with laser tag. Laser tag is a red versus blue. Uh, actual, it, it kind of has a IRL laser tag feel to it. The way that they designed the laser tag arena, it, it, it really flows really well. It gives that dark glow. Uh, it just, it looks really, really nice. And, uh, I don't have any footage of it or else I would show it, but it, laser tag for it to be you know light up tron type theme going on that's what i get from it as a tron vibe it's dark in there everything lights up with lights it just uh it feels really good as you know a laser tag and it's fps it's a first person shooter laser tag so it... have you ever played i don't know if you played laser tag bryce but <laughs> yeah i have <laughs> It's very, very close to real life. If you've ever played real life laser tag, it's almost identical. I mean, you gotta go to a station to, you know, regen your health, and it's literally like real life laser tag. Um, Minus the uh, little bouncing apparatus in the corners. Yeah, that's a little difficult. It's a little bit of a safety hazard in real life. <laughs> yeah, but everything else seems the same. Uh, the as far like as far as hitting people. Uh, you get tagged X amount of times. I think it's three times. You have to go to a recharge station. Yep. Um, stuff like that. So it, it, it it's kind of like IRL laser tag. Um, now, bowling on it. A lot of people complain that bowling sucks <laughs> on Tower Unite. And I have been one of those people. But I feel like a lot of people are trying to compare... Uh, bowling on Tower Unite to bowling on the Wii and it's totally different it's not it's not bowling on the Wii at all like it, it's it's legitimately not very different it's also not like bowling IRL um, the ball has a ton of curve I don't like the personally I don't like the controls uh, I don't like having to push the mouse forward and back to control the curve on the ball um, but there are a lot of cool things you can do like there's different balls you can buy you can upgrade them look at them you know the different different uh, attributes to each individual ball bowling ball which is kind of cool um, I feel like if you can master it you're a legend my opinion there's not really much else to really say about bowling though bowling's just kind of bowling um, it's a fun game to play with friends uh, there's a media player in there so you can listen to music or whatever and chill while you're bowling with other people um, other than that it, it, there's really not a whole lot to it there's some cool visual effects with, depending on what bowling ball you buy um, you can get one that explodes you get one that does some cool like plasma effects uh, but more, more or less, it's just a fun game to play with if you got like two or more friends. Um, yeah. And then next, uh, outside of the game port, there is a typing derby horse race. God, I hate typing. <laughs> I feel like you have to type like 60 words per minute just to finish the race. Uh, I feel like that's that's a little ridiculous. Uh, they do need to work on dumbing that down a bit for those who are not good typers because uh, those just it, it's it's not fun to play because you can't really be competitive if you're not a good typer. Like it, yeah, it, it gives you typing practice, but it would be more it would be more better if you either had a difficulty selection at the start or you had um you know either the difficulty selection or they dumb it down to where it's a little bit easier to at least finish 
Because people are going to lose confidence and they're going to lose motivation if they don't finish derbies. Um, to give people credit though, um, on typing derby, I do think that the way that the game is created is very good compared to like a lot of like i don't know if you've ever gone to websites online like uh where you're able to tell your words per minute or whatever and test how fast you type um but with the ones online they actually detect errors so if you make any errors you actually have to backspace a bunch and then continue mm -hmm. where typing derby the way that it's set up is you supply from what i could find you don't need to press backspace a ton of times just to get to where you were before you just need to keep typing that is uh, which is really really nice that is accurate what bryce just said that is that is 100 percent accurate i can vouch for that because i've done a lot of typing derby and um yeah it's just it, it won't let you advance until you get that one piece correct so therefore you don't have to sit there and type that backspace button just go three sentences back to make one correction which is really nice and then after typing derby, the last event that's outside of the game port is fishing. Uh, I don't know if you've done any fishing in the game or not, Bryce, but I've done a lot oh, of yeah. fishing. <laughs> Getting trash bags and boots and Old broken junk, TVs. broken TVs. <laughs> There's, you can catch anything in the game except for herpes. <laughs> Woo, that was not a dab. <clears throat> that was not a dab. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> yes, it, was. <laughs> it was not. So another really cool aspect um, of the game is the fact that there's a casino outside the game port as well. And that's good for a lot of you guys who are under 21 because this game, uh, some casinos around, you know, are 18 and up. Some are 21 and up. But if you want to go to a casino, this is a great alternative, I guess. So if you have a gambling addiction, this is great. In my opinion, it's great therapy because you can get on here and not spend real money. Mm -hmm. uh, and the games are just like in the casinos. They are blackjack, uh, Texas Hold'em. They have slot machines. They have a big wheel. Uh, you can win prizes from on the big wheel. Although for some freaking reason i always end up with absolutely nothing on the big wheel hula, doll. hula dolls potatoes or absolutely nothing that's what i get the most of um and they even have like a stack of gold don't they a pile of gold they do yep um the texas hold'em is kind of iffy i'm not a big fan of texas hold'em as it is the blackjack is super sketchy. You're going to lose your ass if you play blackjack. I'm sorry, but you are. Like, I feel like that game's rigged to only let the player win, like, five out of, like, I don't know, five out of 30 tries. And what sucks about it is, like, I'm a huge fan of blackjack. I've played on many different blackjack tables, and I've done amazing. However, with the virtual blackjack, I seem to always lose. So I would really like to see them add blackjack tables instead of virtual blackjack. My personal preference, though. I don't like virtual blackjack at all. I don't know why I have to play blackjack on a machine on another game. On, like... I have to get on my computer to play blackjack on a computer. I don't get it. <laughs> I want to play cards. <laughs> but, uh... Attached to the casino, off to the right-hand side, is a nightclub. Um, and in the nightclub, you can go and you can order drinks, and you can get drunk, and you can vomit everywhere. Again, it kind of brings an aspect to those of you kiddos who think drinking's cool. It's not cool. It's not fun. Casually drink. Don't get drunk. <laughs> uh, and... The nightclub is kind of cool. You can go there. You can dance with the little emotes from your characters. And you can put on your own music. Uh, there's also karaoke. You can run a karaoke room and do karaoke with friends. And it's kind of expensive to do karaoke because I think, like, fit what, 15 minutes is like 7,500 units or yeah. something like that in the game, in game currency. 
So it's a bit pricey, but it's fun. And I think that you get unlimited drinks, maybe, or something with the karaoke room for, for cheap. Oh, maybe. I don't remember. I've never played karaoke in the game. That's not that's one game that I've never played. And for those of you who are streamers, I wasn't aware of this, but Bryce just informed me of something. Uh, so for those of you who are streamers and you're in the nightclub or you're, you actively avoid the nightclub because you're scared of those dreaded DMCA laws, uh, Bryce has a solution for you. So there is, from what I believe, a streamer mode of when I first started playing and I found the, this in the settings, um, there's a streamer mode. So basically what it does is it automatically turns off the media player in the game whenever there's something that is kind of, that could be considered uh, copyrighted. Um, that way you don't get struck down or anything like that. And this was, this came out when, before the whole um, law on streaming came out. Um, but it basically prevented streamers from playing copyrighted music without their you know, ability to control it, um, which is kind of cool, so. And in, and in addition to all of that, there's also billiards tables or pool tables in uh, the nightclub with a bar attached in there and a TV screen. So the music video that plays on the dance floor for whatever music you're listening to from YouTube or I think it's SoundCloud, um, those can be viewed while you're playing pool or shooting pool which is kind of cool. You can also order drinks while you're shooting pool. It just kind of brings an IRL aspect to the game. Uh, but let's move on from the casino and nightclub. There is an arcade inside the game. Uh, a virtual arcade, which is kind of cool. It brings back that old school feel. Um, inside of the arcade, you know, it's got the planet carpet and it's got the actual arcade feel. Uh, the way I would describe the arcade is it makes me feel like I'm inside of um, the arcade from Tron, sort of. Uh, yes. if, you, if you guys have ever seen the movie Tron, uh, yeah, yeah, it it makes legitimately it makes me feel like I'm in uh, Flynn's arcade. It does. Uh, it's got the same layout essentially, the the same flow, uh, and the games that the arcade has to offer like grade a arcade games that's like skee ball and whack-a-mole and a little light game where the little colored loops where you gotta stop the light inside the pink lights um there's a meteor drop which is kind of like a plinko uh there's the if you guys ever been to an arcade and played the game where you press the button and it drops the ball then it bounces and there's a bunch of holes in a board that spins i forgot what the name of it is i think it's called ball drop uh it's got one of those uh, and what's cool about it is the arcade actually has a bunch of games coming soon but we'll talk about that in an upcoming topic a little bit later on in the podcast but there's a lot of stuff that they plan on adding which i look very forward to seeing uh but there is also uh there is also like prizes you can win every time you play an arcade machine you get tickets and you can save up your tickets and it's not that hard to get a bunch of tickets you can get a bunch of tickets quick in the arcade um but they actually have a token and ticket system so you can go buy tokens for i think what is it like 50 tokens for 10 bucks i think so uh, and, and remember this is another thing to mention we might bring it up later on um but pixel tail which is the people who created the game they have a very strict no microtransactions no premium currency no paid for dlcs so all of the money in the game, you earn by playing the other games, if that makes sense. Yeah, you earn in-game currency for playing games like in the game port <laughs> or things like that, which is really cool. And it's really, you, and it's not a small amount either. Like, I think one round of mini golf and I had like 30k in-game currency. So it's not bad at all. Um, it's actually quite interesting. Um... Something else that's cool to mention about the arcade is like the prizes that you win. Um, those prizes are 
things like lightsabers or decorations for your house or laser pointers. You know, uh, I think there's even stuff you can buy to like shoot at people in game. Of course, nobody takes player damage, but it, it's still rather cool um, to just kind of sit there and play around in the arcade. You guys, you, you know, I feel like Tower Unite is one of those games that's a great alternative to IRL because of the whole pandemic situation. If you guys want to, if you want to go to an arcade with a group of friends, you now have the power to do it without having to worry about going out in the middle of the pandemic XYZ, you know. So if you're scared of the pandemic, this game is great for you because you can do everything you can in IRL, but without the pandemic scare. No masks. <laughs> no masks. In game. Um, unless you choose to, which is kind of pointless. True. But yeah, and you can. I believe, <laughs> I believe there is masks that you can get. There, there is. Uh, uh, there's also a movie theater. For you to go to with a group of friends and kind of chill out and watch movies and YouTube videos and stuff like that, kind of like the uh, kind of like the karaoke room, but it's a movie theater and you can buy popcorn and drinks and eat and drink. Who knew? Um, and then outside of that, again, in just the basic lobby, there are these mini games that pop up, uh, such as Balloon Pop. Uh, where you shoot darts at balloons with a dart gun and chainsaw massacre where you try to massacre each other with chainsaws and Treasure hunt is another good one or booze bash or fruit bash or whatever. It's called Booze bash will get you super drunk The goal is to just kind of float around jump around and collect drinks and as you collect you actually drink the drinks and Yeah, don't I, I don't suggest playing that one it's kind of fun, kind of quirky, but I stay away from that one just because I like to remember my gameplay. <laughs> fruit is the same way. You just go around and collect fruit. Um, and chains, like I said, Chainsaw Massacre, you just cut each other up with chainsaws. And it's a really small free-for-all arena, which is kind of funny. Uh, the custom ability of the game. The custom ability of the game great because you can buy you can go to the DIY shop in the lobby and you can buy what's called these steam boxes and steam uh, spheres and stuff like that and when you go into your condo that you buy or that you're given at the beginning of the game which by the way you can buy an underwater underwater condo you can buy a high-rise condo you can buy uh, a lot of different types of condos underwater condo high-rise you can buy a house that's like three level uh, you can buy a studio condo you can buy a movie theater condo you can uh, do a lot and the old it, lobby you can buy you can buy a, a condo that is the original Tower Unite lobby are you, are you serious <laughs> it's like 400,000 units I didn't know that. I wasn't aware of that one. That's a that's a good good call right there cuz like that makes me wonder if I can buy a lobby and upload my own games like There's homebrew games. Too. Interesting. Uh, yep. That's a topic we're going to talk about off podcast cuz uh, I'm interested now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I actually <laughs> bought it. So so I'll show you once we get off podcast. Sweet. So I actually have it. Yep. And like with those Steam Workshop items, let's go back to that. With those Steam Workshop items you can actually place them in your condos and you can search the Steam Workshop for literally just about anything you want. You can have any item you want just about in your house. If you want a basketball goal, you can have it. Uh, if you have the house and you have the garage, you can buy, I remember, I got from the Steam Workshop, I got the, uh, the first generation original Jurassic Park for Explorer. <laughs> And put it in my garage as a car. You can do everything in the game. I'm telling you, like the customization is unlimited. Uh, your your avatar for the game that everybody else sees you as, you can actually uh, you can actually change it. Like I am Optimus Prime, a Gen one Gen one Optimus Prime character. I've seen people as anime characters. I've seen people as Death Note. I've seen people as SpongeBob, Patrick. Uh, I hate Greg. Is a really good one. He plays. Does he? 
Huh? <laughs> the Pog Champ logo. The Pog. Like, you can actually be a Pog Champ logo. You can be a paper model of a Super Mario 64 freaking tree. Or a Minecraft three dimensional tree. You can literally be anything you want. Um, and with that being said, that also brings me to all the little hidden features of the game. There's a hidden um, headquarters office in the game you find by just kind of searching around and playing the game. There's also a hidden room around the uh, bowling alley that gives you a dollar if you don't press the button. Uh, or if you press the button, I'm not going to tell you. You guys just have to play and find out. But uh, yeah, there's that. And uh, there's also hidden little plushies around the world too you can collect. And that you get an achievement for, for collecting them all. I think what? There's like eight of them, Bryce? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. So a lot of really cool hidden features. And these things, these plushies aren't just out in the open somewhere hiding under a rock. Some of them you have to look for in the rafters of buildings. There's um, one behind a rock, which kind of contradicts what I just said. There's one way out by a thing that you can do, uh, which brings us to the next topic, the rides. There's also like... A Coney Island you can go to with like a roller coaster and a Ferris wheel. You can actually ride these rides. They're not very entertaining as they're not intense enough for me, but they're there for those of you who want to ride a virtual roller coaster. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of shit to do in the game. Um, you can find an underwater cave. There's a hidden feature at the lighthouse. Uh, there's buried treasure. You have to buy a metal detector and search for the hidden treasure on the beaches because it will wash up every now and then. But I'm not going to tell you where you can buy the metal detector because it is a hidden secret and you guys will just have to learn that on your own. It's not very hidden though, but just learn it. There's jetpacks you can buy. There's hidden achievements all throughout the game. I think it's just a great design to game. Um, but, but these guys... This game has been out, Bryce, for over five years now. And a lot of people are just now hearing about it. Uh, which concerns me in a way, but not really. Because they are still not finished with the game. They're still releasing updates with new content and things like that. There's a whole lot of coming soon uh, posters up everywhere. Such as coming soon for the... Uh, Coming soon for like the bumper cars. Uh, coming soon for a bunch of arcade uh, games. I don't know what else is coming soon. I know that there's a whole separate island and a monorail track that's not in use. So hopefully we'll see those in the upcoming updates. Uh, but what 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 do you think we can expect in the upcoming updates for this game? Um. There's a lot. Uh, if you go into the game right now, if you, if you know, theoretically you were to go into the game right now, there's a lot of places that have signs that say coming soon. Uh, but then again, right now there's a lot of state places that are up and functional and running. And, and there's enough to do where you will not get bored of this game. Um, personally, I've had a couple days where, you know, I play it straight through every single day. And then I'll take, you know, two or three days off and then I'll come back again. And, you know, you have an entirely new crowd. Um, they're continually adding new stuff, so, you know, that'll entertain you for, like, a month or two. And then, say, the next month, they'll come up with something new. There's always something new to do in the game. And to keep it freshened up, they are... Uh, they are... <laughs> they are adding... Uh, they do special events, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you can earn double arcade tickets or you earn double currency on specific weekends for holidays. I know they just had a St. Patty's Day event, I believe, uh, which is kind of cool. But, um, 4.30 for 4 this evening, so it's just barely when I'm live. <laughs> what do you mean? The uh, St. Patty's Day event. Oh, really? 4.30, yep. Interesting. So that just dropped, so make sure you guys hop on and check that out. Again, this game is only 25 bucks. For a game that is 25 bucks, it's a well $25 spent, uh, in my opinion. I don't think you're gonna find a game much better for $25. Um, let's talk about some of the glitches. 
the glitches in this game. Uh, let's not reveal too much, but there are some pretty cool glitches that you can uh, you can break in the game. And let's just say we have both done them, and they're kind of cool for a visual aspect of the game. But it's not something that I could necessarily do uh, all the time. Also, if you press the K button on your keyboard, something magical will happen. <laughs> something magical will happen. So make sure you press that K while you're flying through the sky with a jetpack if you ever achieve one. Uh, and just watch what happens. It's, it's epic. Uh, there's, like I said, you get hidden gifts and hidden achievements and shit throughout the game. And there's a lot of really cool stuff. Like, if you spend enough time in the lobby... Uh, you get a firework launcher, right? Firework gun, I think. Mm -hmm. You can also buy like a confetti gun. If you play enough mini golf, you get a golf club. You can walk around and whack people with. Obviously, it doesn't kill them. But you can walk around and whack random people with a golf club. You can throw golf balls. Uh, there's like prizes for everything that you do. Uh, it, it's just a really cool game. There's so much to it for it to only be $25. And you'll never get bored of it. And if you do, you have problems. And, uh... What do you want from the game? What do, what do you want to see them add, Bryce? So, I'm really excited for Arcade Phase 2. Arcade Phase 2 is going to bring in a lot of new games in the arcade. I spend a lot of time in the arcade as it is. Um, just playing around with all the different games and stuff that they have. They've got billiards, they've got, um... You know, um, like you said, the, the champ teams, such as like the ball drop one and the one with the spinning wheel, um, where you got to stop it in time. And then there's the uh, there's just a bunch of different games that are in there. But I'm excited to see the rest of the game because there's a lot of stuff in there right now that says it's under development, like a shooting arena. One of them is um, like, I don't know if you've ever been to like the Cabela's before or like a Bath Pro Shops. But they've got the, these shooting arenas inside of the store where you got to aim at the target and, and shoot it. Um, but yeah, they, they've got one coming to the arcade in Phase 2, I believe. Uh, I'm excited to see upgraded condos, so more condos um, should be coming soon as well. we got the bumper cars, which is obviously coming. Um, I've got Charlotte. Oh yeah, and just another thing. Um, the dev team is very, very transparent on, on all of their stuff that they're doing. Uh, so they've got a new or ongoing lobby updates that they're continually um, adding things into and moving things around. And uh, they have new game modes that are coming. I'm just they, there's just so much of the game that's still left to go. It's been in production for six years now, uh, which does sound like a really long time for. For a game like this but you got to remember it's continually evolving it's just update after update after update um, so even though it's not finished it, it's it literally is one of those games that has to continually be updated to, it to be interesting right yeah and that's what i got <laughs> you know is there any uh since you're you know in there and you have your foot in the door with a developmental team and you've been keeping up more with it than what I have. Uh, are there any dates um, set? Like, you don't have to give a specific date. You can answer yes or no. But is there any time frame that we can possibly expect uh, in the future for things like the arcade phase two type update? So, there isn't. There is not a finished date per se. Um, they give you sort of an expected timeline. Oh, it'll be out by the end of this year. Oh, we'll shoot for, you know, July-ish. But the, the way that it works is they'll finish. They have a timeline, or they basically have like a checklist of all the different updates that they have planned for that. And they'll go ahead and check off each one of those, and they'll actually put it in this Trello roadmap um, that they've got and basically show you that, hey, We've worked on this, we finished this, we're moving on to the next thing. So you can sort of, it's almost like a progress bar that they've done completing it. So you're like, oh, this is going to be done soon if there's like two more things left, you know what I mean? Right. 
Um, now, would you classify Tower Unite as an MMO? Uh, for me, I would because it's you know, it's a huge player base, or it's capable of having a huge player base. I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. Um, I know there's a couple of Discord servers that I'm a part of that I'm really uh, interactive with that have actually become addicted to Tower Unite. <laughs> and like, they all play it as a game for Community Night uh, because it is such a large player base. Each lobby, for God's sake, is, you know, freaking 60, what is it, 64 people? Each lobby mm -hmm. can hold up to 64 people. Um, That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people in a lobby, not to mention how many lobbies are there total, like 13? That is a lot. And all over the world, there's different servers hosting different worlds. So there's, I mean, if there's one that's full, you can always find something that's open. I've never it's seen a out. completely full lobby. No, either, or I've seen a, full, I've seen a couple full lobbies. Really? That are 64 out of 64. Um, usually that's on the day of updates, or just barely. Like, I feel like if you went on now, um, you would see at least one or two that are 64 out of 64. Uh, but usually they are relatively open. Now, I don't know what that's going to look like over time, because a lot of YouTubers have just recently started posting things about Tari Night. Um, so it's going to start growing rather quickly, um, just because it's gotten to that stage. Okay. Um, as a party type community night based game, uh, how well would you like recommend Tower Unite to play as a group? Uh, again, this is like touching base on the whole COVID-19 pandemic type thing. If you're feeling lonely and you want to play some games with some people, or you want to go to an arcade with some friends, you now have that option to do it right, right in your home off your PC. So, like, how much... On a, like, 1 to 10 scale, how well would you recommend, or what would your number be as far as recommending this game for people to play? If they are, again, scared of, like, the pandemic XYZ, or they're having a community night, you know, you live in different parts of the world, you just want to play a game with random friends and you don't know what to play uh how well is tower unite for something like that and how well you know what would you recommend i mean this is literally the perfect game for that kind of thing if you're if you're afraid of going out with friends during the pandemic um i'd say this is the perfect game to play um it's very similar to like a, almost like a role-playing game kind of um, but you're not really role. It's kind of, it's, yeah, it's not like a role playing game, but it's sort of like a role playing game, as in you can converse with people and, and hang out with them. Um, I the would. Other one, the only other option is Gary's Mod, really. <laughs> for, That's the closest thing to it. Um, yeah. Now, what a lot of, another thing that a lot of people don't realize is Tower Unite. Before it was Tower Unite, it was what? So it was called G Mod Tower. And I played Gmod Tower for three or four years before it closed down. And if you've ever played Gary's Mod, you know that the workshop is a huge part of the game. As well as, um, it's a very... It's one of those games that's very open-ended. So, when they came out with Gmod Tower, um, they basically implemented all those things into the game mode. So you could place objects in your condo, and you could play music because it was already existed. Um, media player. There, basically, they took it straight from Gary's mod, lifted it up, and brought it over and basically placed it in its own game, while changing the game engine. If that makes sense. Which it does. That makes perfect sense. Um, and it. <laughs> Well, for me, anyways, it makes perfect sense. I understand, totally. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I'm not going to say that Tower Unite is better than Gmod Tower, because I never played Gmod Tower, but being a former Gmod Tower player, uh, how is it? <laughs> it's different. It's very 
different, although it's the same. It's really interesting. I was younger at the time. I mean, obviously I was 15, 16 years old when Piedmont Tower finally went away. Uh, but it, the, the community is different, but at the same time, the community is very supportive of each other. Um, I mean, I've had five or six people add me on Steam just because, you know, I was playing a mini golf game with them and they were having fun. Um, exactly, Retro was one of them, and Chill Shadow, and a bunch of other people um, I've become friends with the game just by playing literally just a simple mini golf game. And your friends start, or your new friends talk to friends, and you guys all play the same game, and it's, it's really a com good community building building game. Yeah, do you um? Let's see here. Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. <laughs> do you uh? Do you think Tower Unite is going to blow up among streamers and or players? I do. I definitely think so. It's similar to VR chat without VR, and you have a lot more interactability or interactive ability, whatever in game, than something like VR chat. I've played VR chat. Yes, there. I mean, it's it's similar where you can get your own player model, stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, it's nice to have a game that you don't need to necessarily play VR with, that's accessible to literally anybody with. Even the lowest end computers. This can run on pretty much a potato. <laughs> yeah, the game is not... I, I do know a streamer out there, and I'm not trying to throw her under the bus, and I'm not going to mention her name, but uh, I do have a really good friend of mine, and she's a streamer as well, and um, she loaded up Tower Unite one, one time, and her PC completely crashed. Her PC was kind of a potato, and I think she was just having a bad day, uh, PC and tech-wise, because, like, everything kind of screwed up. It took her, like, a few hours to have everything rebooted. So I think she, that, I think her, I think her tech that day was just, you know, I think she was just having a bad day. I don't think that's a Tower Unite blame, but could it have been an issue with Tower Unite? Um, I've had a couple problems before where I'm in the middle of a game and it's crashed and it said send feedback or whatever. It closes up and then has a window. Um, but a lot of the times I'm, it's because I've overclocked my, I've overclocked my graphics card a little bit, just a little bit. And sometimes that creates errors and stuff in games. So that might be why. So that might have, you know, again, that was my opinion on the subject, too. Um, that might have been a tech problem just for her. I don't see this game being powerful enough to really crash, even a low-end PC. No, you just gotta let it run on low settings, really. Right. And low settings really is not bad graphics at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, oh, boy. It's like a one-off thing. It really is, it really is. So, um... With that being said, we are going to actually take a five-minute break, uh, and we'll be back with some more content. Uh, so stay tuned, guys, and we will be right back. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I hope you are enjoying the podcast, but we're going to take a five-minute break, and we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. All right, there. Um,
All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, we are going to uh, be watching a couple of trailers with you guys to kind of touch base on what each thing is. Um, we have like a mini golf uh, trailer and a virus trailer and a ball race trailer and the casino and bowling and even the condos that you guys can buy. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just click over and start watching some of these. Like, I think we're going to start off with the mini golf because I think that's where a lot of people thrive. Um, a lot of people enjoy the mini golf the most. So let's watch the mini golf one and we can have a little bit of a discussion about it. So yeah, there was the mini golf trailer. A lot of people are drawn in by the mini golf. Uh, I think the mini golf is actually quite successful. Um, I find it to be my most enjoyed game on Tower Unite as far as mini games go. There's what nine different maps, twelve different mm -hmm. maps. So I think it's twelve. Twelve different maps, which is kind of yeah. cool. It gives you variety of maps. And I've noticed over the course of the past few uh, past few months, they have actually remastered some of the maps to give better graphics and better quality. Uh, these maps are no joke, though. Like it's not they are not easy tasks, like at all. They are uh, <clears throat> super intricate. There are tricks. Uh, I've learned there are tricks to playing them. There are uh, quite a few maps that are hole in one capable. You know, as long as you do it just right. But you gotta mix it, or milk it. You gotta milk it just right. Um, but, I mean... Like I said, for those of you who have ever played uh, Golf With Your Friends on Xbox, which I'm sure you probably haven't, Bryce. But for those of you who have played Golf With Your Friends on Xbox, it's essentially the same game. You just... It's as easy as point and click, right? Uh, obviously the further you are away from your ball, uh, your cursor is away from the ball, decides how strong you hit the ball, and other than that, it's just... It's almost identical. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much golf with your friends, like... Yeah. Which is cool, in my opinion, because everyone who played golf with your friends now has the capability of playing this. <laughs> yep. So... Um, what drew you to the game, Richard? Was it did you buy it or what drew me to the game? Um, I was actually dating somebody, um, which unfortunately that's no longer the case. But I was actual, well, yeah, I was dating somebody, and um, this person actually bought me the game. Kept trying to get me to play the game and kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I was like, ah, I was very skeptical. And um, I ended up actually buying the game. And it was, you, you know, I played it and I, I was addicted ever since. That's just the way it was. I played it and I was addicted, which for those of you who are addicted to something, Get addicted to video games because it's probably the healthiest addiction you can have, honestly. Um, there's so much worse things you can do. Instead of, you know, being addicted to drugs or alcohol or spending money, impulsive buying, you can sit down and play Tower Unite for hours and never get bored. And, and meet, new people, along the meet way. new people along the way like I did with Bryce. And okay. you guys can just have a good time overall with, you know, Tower Unite. And let your addiction be fed 
with Tower Unite. Like, it's not something you will ever, ever get tired of. Uh, there are times where I've been burnt out on the game, but I played the game for like nine hours, and I did like 19 rounds of mini golf. And at that point, it kind of got tiring for that day. But even with that being said, two days later, I went back to the game. And you try something new. Right. And you try something new, and, you know, you play that for a while until you get burnt out, and then, you know, you it's like a big cycle, and then you can start with that thing that you were that you first got burnt out with, and it becomes fun again. Right. So. That's exactly how it is. And um, now let's 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 take a look at uh, this virus game that uh, is very in very similar to Infected and Infection. Uh, infected being Halo, Infection being Call of Duty. Uh, but these games, th this virus game is very similar. Wouldn't you agree, Bryce? Yeah, I haven't played either of them, but yeah, I guess they're similar. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Alright guys, let's take a look at it. Hey there, I'm Matt from Pixel Tail Games. Bryce? Yeah. Okay, that wasn't my problem. I'm sorry, guys. So anyways, like I was saying, Infected is kind of like one of those quirky games where it is a first-person shooter, and it's 1v5, I think? 1v6? 1v10? Something like that. And there's just that one person has to try to infect everybody by the time uh, time it runs out. But now let's take a look at Accelerate and talk about Accelerate for a minute, which is another mini game in the game port. Uh, Accelerate, the only way I can describe it, Bryce, is by uh, saying it's like Mario Kart. That's the only thing I can I can think of. Like, I can't compare it to anything else. So, yeah, it's like a knockoff um, Mario Kart. There's items and all sorts of stuff, which makes me wonder how this game has not been sued yet. <laughs> But, anyways, let's take a, let, let's, let's, let's have a look at Accelerate, and I'll let you guys decide what Accelerate, you know, brings to that table. Well, if the sound would work. Nice shot. Okay. 
So that is what Accelerate looks like. Um, there's really nothing to compare it to besides Mario Kart. Like, there really isn't. Basically a Mario Kart. Um, a lot of the, it's a lot of similar items in the game, too. In the same way that you can get your power-ups is about the same. Um, Hello! Yeah, it's literally just Mario Kart. Um, without, obviously, the Mario characters and like other characters. Now, I did find a really neat video here. And it's... Um, I say um a lot. I'm trying not to do that. But it is the... Tower Unite Arcade Phase 1 gameplay to show guys and girls out there what to expect from the arcade. And I, again, I think the virtual arcade on this was a smash. Like, I think they blew it away. I, I don't think there was anything they really left out and what they did, you know, leave out, they are adding in. Um... So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like.
that gives a lot of people an idea about what the uh, what the arcade is like inside of Tower Unite. I think that's that's a pretty good uh, point of view, you know, for a player. Uh, I think it brings a lot of really cool stuff. Again, there was ski ball, and there was there was ski ball, uh, meteor drop. The stacking game, which is, in my opinion, a really good game. I really liked that. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to the real life stacker. Right. Um, except for the, you know, the physical prizes. Obviously, you get you get units if you get high enough, but uh, normally with stacker, you would get <sighs> prizes. Mm-hmm. And there is also something else that we can take a look at and go over. There is also a uh, casino for those of you with a gambling addiction. You can hop in the casino and gamble your life away without spending real money. And still get that sense of... You can still get that sense of gratitude when you win. Mm -hmm. So it still feels good to win. So let's go ahead and take a look at that casino real quick. That's a long time. The video I found was forever long. This one doesn't seem like it's as long. So yeah, we're gonna hop over and take a look at that, you guys. Hey there, I'm Matt from Pixeltail Games, and it's finally time for me to show off the brand new casino. Just as a quick reminder, let's check out the old casino from Gmon Tower. Ew. Gross. And here's the brand new casino. Ooh, that looks nice. Luxurious, elegant, sleek, an experience unable to comprehend. The Dairy Night Casino is something unlike you've ever seen. Get ready to spend all of your money because casino games are just weaponized mathematics designed to keep the middle class motivated and complacent. Okay, let's pump the brakes there, champ. Yes, friends, it's actually here. Welcome to the new Tower Unite Casino. We've got a lot to show off here, so let's dive right in. First off, you're probably noticing that we've got three different types of slots, all with unique play styles. We've got your classic slot machine here that you all know and love. We've got Grand Quest, a brand new action slot game where you slay the dragon to win your jackpot. And Wheel of Money, which lets you spin for the jackpot or other cash prizes. Next, we see the return of Video Poker, which is faster paced than ever. And we've also got Spin to Win, loaded up with all new prizes, such as Cactus. We're also introducing our brand new machine, Double or Nothing, where you double or nothing. Oh, way to go, dumbass. We're also unveiling our brand new, never before seen video blackjack machine. And who could forget that we're launching with the most popular table card game, Texas Hold'em. Yikes, looks like somebody isn't feeding their children tonight. <laughs> Uh, and I know there's some of you in the back right now. Yeah, I'm looking at you, buddy. You're asking something like, Well, golly gee, Pixel Tail, what took you guys so long? Well, to answer that question, we're going straight to the source. Hello? Hey, Zach, what's up? Matt? Yeah, how's, how's it going? Matt, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I, I just had a couple questions for you really quick. Uh, what have you been up to uh, besides working on the casino? Uh, I've literally only been working on casino. It's been, it's been like three months and nothing's really happened. Look, Making the casino isn't really like an easy thing to do. It it took like a few months to sort out all the security. Wait, issues. hold on, hold on. So you're telling me you haven't been wasting our money? No. All right, well, this is a waste of my time. Well, the truth is, is we've also been working on some other stuff as well, like a brand new mini golf map and general improvements to tower. If this is your first time checking up on tower. All right, we don't really care about everything else because right now top is the casino. So, yeah, guys, uh, that video was a little outdated, I feel, but there is Texas Hold'em, there is video blackjack. Uh, there are still a lot of good features uh, to the casino. For those of you who actually enjoy to gamble, there's slot machines. I can confirm that the Big Wheel uh, slot machine is there. Uh, the video blackjack is there. The Texas Hold'em tables are there. Uh, the Spin to Win games are there. And... Uh, it's 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 something it's something uh you can win big if you sit in there for long enough and you gamble long enough you will win 
and I, I personally won stuff off of the wheel before, um, it, like big stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's actually quite intriguing, everything that you can do. And this weekend, this goes back to the whole um, St. Paddy's Day thing. They are having, it's an increased chance of winning um, in the casino this weekend as well. So if you go in there this weekend, um, your your chances of actually winning something are double, supposedly. So there's that. Uh, guys, I think that we are out of topics for the day. I really do. Uh, huh. So the podcast is going to be cut 30 minutes short. We have just a few minutes left uh, in case anybody has any questions for us. We'll wait about five minutes and then we're going to end the podcast. I would like to say thank you guys so much. Uh, after after the podcast, uh, I will be going live on Twitch. Not with Tower Unite, but with Super Mario Galaxy, courtesy of Bryce. Yeah. So we're going to do a continuation of Super Mario Galaxy over on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bryce, if I could get you so kindly to exclamation point Twitch, drop that Twitch link in my chat for me. Uh, but if you guys don't have uh, any more questions, is Odiebot not working? No, Odiebot isn't working. He's well, not. dang. Uh, but anyways... I will go ahead and throw HTTPN. Do, 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 do. There we go. There's a link to the Twitch. So if you guys want to continue to connect with me, like I said, we will be playing a continuation of Super Mario Galaxy as we try to complete the game uh, over there. But if you guys have any more questions, be sure to um, ask real quick before we hop off. We're going to be hopping off in about two minutes. Um, but I appreciate all you guys that stopped in, all you guys that stopped by. Uh, this video will be up on YouTube for those of you who missed it, so you can always watch the podcast replay. Uh, I am new to the podcast myself, so I'm still trying to work out a few kinks. I know that there was a couple of errors today that were made. And I do apologize about that. Uh, Every Friday, I'm going to be doing a podcast over here, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then after the podcast, I will be going live on Twitch from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, but thank you guys so much for being here. Bryce, it was so good to have you on the podcast. Thank you for filling in when Shadow wasn't able to make it. Uh, We're going to try to swing back around and grab her for another podcast. Uh, hopefully she agrees and hopefully she's able to make it. Um, I know that she had some stuff going on and wasn't able to make it, uh, as well as, yeah, just things come up. It's real life. We're people too. We might be content creators and streamers and gamers, but we have IRL stuff that does pop up. Uh, and I do appreciate her, you know, being available for this one all the way up until the last minute when she wasn't able to. So I, I a shout out if you're out there and you're watching and you see this, I do love you and uh, I do appreciate you and you are amazing and I'm sorry that we weren't able to get you in. Uh, kind of a last minute thing with Bryce, uh, last minute swap, but hopefully next time everything goes a lot smoother and we are able to actually plan ahead. Uh, we're going to try to bump you out on the schedule to try to get you on, try to get it you know, taken care of and everything looking good. So, but next week, guys, next week on the podcast, it's probably going to be uh, Tech Talk. Either Tech Talk or um, we're going to be talking about the release of the new remastered Pokemon Diamond and Pearl versions uh, for the Nintendo Switch. We're going to test that out and see how well uh, we think those are going to go, and we're going to talk about it and whatnot. So we're also, it's either going to be the Pokemon podcast next week or it's going to be the streamer advice uh, podcast next week. I'm not sure. I got to look at the schedule and double check. But make sure you guys join the Discord. Um, I don't have a link to drop right now. I don't think as bot is, uh, Odiebot's not working. So I do apologize about that. But if you stop by Twitch, I will give you a link to the Discord and you can get all the stream slash podcast updates on the Discord, as well as post your own content. So make sure you guys join that Discord. 
Um, I want to say thank you guys for being here. You have anything else to add, Bryce? I don't think I've got anything. I think that's that's a wrap. Hey, look, Odie just warned you. So. Yeah, I know they did. <laughs> so it's sort of working. Partially, which, by the way, Odiebot, guys, if you're new to Glamash, Odiebot is a demo. It's a beta version bot right now. It's not... It's not... It's not a completed bot. They, they are still working out kinks. He's still in development. So, but thank you guys so much for being here. Bryce has nothing else to add. So we'll go ahead and end the podcast. But thank you guys so much. I love each and every one of you. And I hope to see you over on Twitch. Have a good night, guys. See yeah. ya.